All right, YouTube, today we're taking a look at a pipe which tapers from one diameter to another. And I'm gonna show you how to solve for the change in static pressure of the fluid as it goes from the large pipe into the smaller pipe. Now this problem is based on two main principles. The first being continuity, and the second being Bernoulli's law. But before tackling continuity or Bernoulli's law, the first thing I wanna do is look at probably the most common mistake that gets made in all of beginning fluid mechanics and that is not paying attention to the units which we've been given in the problem. And I can't stress sorting out the units on the front end of this problem enough. So if you're dealing with the wrong units, you're never gonna get this problem right. So our diameter isn't gonna be 10 centimeters, it's gonna be 0 0.1 meters. And this diameter of the discharge or the smaller pipe is gonna be not five centimeters, but 0 0.05 meters. Now our pressure is given to us is 101 kilopascals. We want to turn this into pascals, so that's going to be 101,000 pascals. Remember, a pascal is nothing other than a newton per square meter. Now our flow over here is given as 10 liters per second. Converting that into cubic meters per second, which is 0 0.01 cubic meters per second. Now in this problem, we're using water. And most people will remember from typically chemistry that the density of water is one. The issue there being the units, grams per milliliter. Well, if we convert that into kilograms per cubic meter, the density of water is actually 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, not one. Now in this problem, we've been given the pressure on the inlet side of this pipe, or really the pressure in the fluid before this taper. And we're trying to solve for the pressure, the static pressure, in the fluid after the pipe. Now the first thing that I want to warn you about is about trying to apply something like the ideal gas law to this. You see, we're dealing with an incompressible fluid, but somehow people think that because the fluid's going from a large pipe to a smaller pipe, it somehow got compressed, and therefore the pressure is going to go up. It doesn't. And what we're actually going to do is turn to continuity, which says that the fluid flow, and we use Q for flow, is equal to the cross-sectional area of some cylindrical pipe multiplied by the velocity of a fluid through that pipe. And the big idea to recognize here is that whatever fluid passes some point over here is ultimately gonna have to pass through this smaller pipe later on. Otherwise, we'd get a buildup of fluid right here in this taper and the whole thing would explode like a bomb. So what that means is we can look at the left side of this pipe as the inlet, I'll say the diameter of the inlet, pressure at the inlet, and over here, after the taper, we're going to call that the outlet. So there's some pressure at the outlet, some diameter at the outlet. But going back to our continuity equation, that means the flow, which has to be the same at both the inlet and outlet, is equal to the area at the inlet, velocity at the inlet, but it's also equal to the area at the outlet, or discharge, multiplied by the velocity at the outlet, or discharge. Now the next big mistake I see when people work this problem is they try to plug in the diameter for the area. But remember, the area of a cylindrical pipe is given by pi r squared. And be careful because we weren't given the radius in this problem, we were given the diameter. Which means the area is going to be better expressed as diameter over 2. So now that we know the fluid flow as well as the diameter of the pipe, we can use the continuity equation to solve for the velocity on both sides of this pipe taper. So setting our fluid flow, which is 0 0.01, equal to the area, first at the inlet, that's going to be pi times 0 0.01 over 2 squared, and be careful with the distribution of this squared right here, multiplied by the velocity at the inlet. We can also say this flow, 0 0.01 cubic meters per second, is equal to pi times the diameter at the discharge, that's going to be 0 0.05 over 2 squared, multiplied by the velocity at the outlet, or discharge. And we find the velocity at the inlet is 1.27 meters per second, and the velocity at the discharge is 5.09 meters per second. And now that we have our two velocities, we're going to turn to Bernoulli's law, or Bernoulli's equation, in order to solve for the change in pressure. Now the first thing I want to caution you about with Bernoulli's law is these right here. They look like lowercase p's, but they're not. They're in fact the Greek letter rho for density. Do not get them confused with this, a capital P, which is the static pressure which we're given and are trying to solve for. Now in this problem, because the fluid is always staying at the same height, 
This term rho GH, which is called the hydrostatic pressure, cancels out, or really it stays the same the whole time. Now for those of you who have taken physics, this may look a little bit like a gravitational potential energy term. We're looking at rho GH rather than MGH. And realize if you back up enough in Bernoulli's law, what you'll actually wind up at is the conservation of energy. In a similar manner, this 1 half rho V squared term should look a lot like kinetic energy. We're just dealing with the density of a fluid rather than the mass of an object. Now first applying the left side of this equation over here to the inlet side of our pipe. We've got 1 half times the density of the fluid, that's 1,000 kilograms per cubic meter, multiplied by the velocity over here on the inlet, which we already found was 1.27 meters per second squared. Plus the static pressure, that's 101,000 pascals. And we're going to set that equal to 1 half times the density of the fluid, which is still 1,000, times the velocity on the discharge side. That's 5.09 squared. Plus this P2 term, realize that's what we're actually trying to solve for, the pressure at the discharge. So solving for the static pressure in the narrower part of the pipe, we find there's 88,852 pascals, or just shy of 89 kilopascals. And kids, you take the sig figs with this just as far as you want, I, I just don't care. So this has been how to use continuity in Bernoulli's law to solve for the change in pressure in a pipe taper. I hope you found this useful. And on that note, that's all for now.